Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. Today, we're going to look at and I am going to talk about some vintage paper. That's right. It's just a straight up midweek eye candy visit of paper goodies. If you like vintage paper and ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications and then you will have more of it every week. Some of what we're going to look at today I have acquired recently, while some of it is stock that actually does live in um, my studio here in Swansea in Wales. Such as this. This is a magazine called La Mode Illustrée, and it is from 1881. And this is an edition of a fashion magazine. And it would have come out weekly. And ladies would have taken this magazine to get ideas about how to dress, uh, what kind of you know, their hairstyles, their hats. And then at the end of the year, you would take your editions and have them bound into a hardback big thing. And then you would keep it on your coffee table for when other ladies came to visit. And you would talk about stuff. These I did acquire recently at uh, the car boot sales, the flea market near where I live. We've only had car boot sales back for about two weeks, and I am so happy. These are volumes of albums of cigarette cards. Back in the day, if you bought a packet of cigarettes, there would be a card in there, and then you or would collect them or give them to someone who did. And you could put them in an album, but they also, it's not at all unusual for me to be able to find them loose like this. So, but here's another album. This one did not come in cigarettes, it came in tea. So if you bought a box of PG tips, you would have got one of these bird cards. A woodpecker. That fell out. I uh, use these to make teeny tiny tags for very small pockets in my altered books and art journals. They're very whimsical. This is one I've had a while, but it certainly seems like a good time to show it. It's from the 1930s. And it's filled with old movie stars. There's Joan Crawford. Uh, Marlene Dietrich. It says this is Betty Davis, but hmm, I'm not sure. And then here we have Greta Garbo. And a very young Catherine Hepburn. I love these things. I also got last Sunday this mixed lot of old paper. This is handwritten from 1893. And I almost have a dilemma here because it's actually got a super cool map on the other side of the letter. So probably I will put this in a pocket so that I don't have to glue one side down. It can be taken out, opened up, and then put back in a pocket in an altered book. Uh, this is uh, typewritten, but I love that old font. An invoice. And then this is a receipt for gold shares. So... That was a, a very nice little lot. Okay. This is from 1953 and 54, which is actually a little bit late for the kind of work that I make, but I thought it would be fun to show it's a ration book. And here in Britain, 
uh, during the war and, and after, uh, food was so scarce that you were issued these ration cards so that everybody got a fair amount of food. And my husband was born in an air raid during World War II. And he remembers rationing very well. And um, see, so you had coupons for sugar, bacon, cheese, eggs, and meat. And um, the ration for eggs at this time was one egg per child per week. So you can see times were hard. And my husband, who is Jewish, says that his mom used to take her bacon coupons and trade them for stockings. So staying with World War II, but going back to France, I have a carte d'identité and it's from 1943. It is kind of unusual to find these in my price range. I look for them a lot, but they're kind of pricey. I got lucky that day. I am going to alter this by adding a critter. Not quite sure what yet, but I'm thinking, you know, something like that. And then this will go in the pocket of an altered book. Also from France, this is some old stationery. And these are actually called wrappers. If you ever go to an old postage show, you can ask for wrappers. It's because these are bills and invoices but they didn't bother with envelopes. That was, that was kind of fancy and expensive. So they would, if you had an invoice or a bill like this, it was wrapped and then a little bit of sealing wax or a stamp would hold it closed. So, let's see. This one has some beautiful calligraphed cover. And it's from a cognac company. Finally, I have these uh, these really charming cards, and um, I got these very recently, and I have collected old paper for years, and I'd never seen this before. These are menu cards from a First Communion. They are in French, and somebody would have bought these pre-printed cards, and they have these religious themes. And then they would have handwritten this invitation. It says, uh, thank you for your presence at my party, which would have been again for a child's first communion. And here is the menu. There's a, a soup. There's gondole solennelle. I don't know what that is. Filet mignon and uh, with creamy potatoes. Asparagus points, point d'asperge. And then there would have been some veal with a pear glace and chicken with lettuce hearts, followed by a crown of bananas with a creme fraiche. And finally, a gâteau désiré Joseph, which means a fancy cake. I don't know about you, but when I was going to church in rural Mississippi, when I was a girl, we didn't have that. I, I think we had that kind of um, weird salad with the, the coconut and the marshmallows. Do you remember those? I wonder what the French 
would be for that. If you like old paper, I often have scans of the vintage paper, and you can get those through my online newsletter, which goes out monthly. If you'd like to subscribe, the link is in the text below this video. I also have a monthly giveaway, and you're in the drawing for that. And there's some fashion, some history. It's, it's fun. So please join me. If you are interested in paper, I also have a link in the text below to some that I have in my online shop. Okay, please join me Friday when I will have an art tutorial. I'm going to test drive some new art supplies. Until then, happy making.